Eh. It's okay. That's terrible. I actually kind of like this one. Finally! Some real art! <laughs> Every artist starts out the exact same way. Terrible. Hey, art's hard. When starting out, our drawings usually look something like this. We don't know how to draw anything detailed yet, so things stay very simple, with most of us drawing humans as basic stickmen. Or, in my case, these weird potato-looking guys. But as one's art improves and gets more and more detailed, people sometimes start to look down on their old stickman art, because it's seen as the sort of default beginner art style people don't consider it real art. I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone look at some kind of drawing and say something along the lines of, wow, that's really good, I can only draw stickmen. People use this style of art to put themselves and sometimes other artists down. Well, I'm sick of it. Someone's gotta stand up for this unappreciated art style, and I guess by default, it's gonna be me. The truth is, there's a lot of incredible stuff out there that only uses basic stickmen. I made my fair share of stick figure comics back in the day. Around 2009-2010, I drew these comics called Pirate vs. Ninja. If you've seen Mad Spy vs. Spy, it was basically that, but with these little stick pirates and ninjas. It wasn't very good, but I was in middle school and nothing I was making was particularly good. And that is where most people's stick drawing journey ends, but what happens when people who actually know what they're doing go on to do stuff with this art style? Just look at something like Animator vs. Animation, an animation where someone at the computer and the character they drew fight for control of the computer. This came out in 2007 and is still crazy impressive to this day. I took a college class in animation a few years ago and the first thing our teacher did was show this to us. This is one of the best examples of a simple character design working in favor of the piece. The creator really makes the most out of the stickman with so much energy and personality. And while we're on the topic of animation, I can't not talk about Flipnote Studio. This was an animation tool built in on the Nintendo DSi. You could make simple animations and share them online for the world to see. It was so cool. I made plenty of these, but I really enjoyed watching ones that other people made. Since Flipnote was pretty limited and the DSi had a pretty small screen space for drawing, this led to a lot of very simple animations many of which used stick figures. And that's not a bad thing at all, a lot of these looked incredible. A bunch of the funnier ones had these great facial expressions. And then there were the stick fights. Oh my god, the stick fights. You cannot say, stick figure art is lazy, when stuff like this exists. The animation is just so incredible, especially considering this was on the Nintendo DSi. If this isn't the greatest thing you've ever seen, then uh, let me know, actually. I haven't found anything better since then. The last 10 years have been a pretty big disappointment. I should stop talking about Flipnote for a little while before I can't stop. I, I'm very passionate about these things. You know what they say, once you start talking about Flipnote Studio, it's hard to stop. Uh, what was the other thing I was going to talk about today? <gasps> flash games! I'm sorry guys, here comes another long tangent. Early 2000s online flash games and stick figures were inseparable. Look on Newgrounds right now and you'll find page after page of stick figure games. Look on Congregate and you'll find the same thing. Look on Armor Games, I could go on and on. There's just so many of these. You have Stickman running in the city, Stickman playing the guitar, you have Stickman with a gun, Stickman on a bike, Stickman in a shopping cart, Stickman in a porta potty, Stickman dying over and over and over because this game is so hard. The list goes on and on until the end of time. And you know what? All of these games are cool. They're so cool. Simple and fun gameplay with a simple, but still good looking, art style. And notice that every single one of those games had a completely different character design. Even though it's simplistic, there's still a lot of creativity and artistry involved. And that brings us to the king of stick figure flash games, Fancy Pants Adventures. I'm not going to talk about the gameplay itself, obviously it's incredible, but I'll talk about that in length some other time. No, right now I want to focus on Fancy Pants himself. Fancy Pants Adventures isn't just a cool series of games because the gameplay is good, but also because the character is good, as weird as that might sound. For such a simple character, he has such detailed animation. 
The animations aren't there just for show though, part of what makes the game so fun is just controlling the character. Basic actions like running and jumping feel so good because of how he moves. It makes the gameplay feel a lot more satisfying. And the animation gives so much personality to the character of Fancy Pants, a character who never speaks. He looks like this, yet feels like a real person because of how he's drawn. I usually hate silent protagonists in games, but Fancy Pants is one of the few exceptions. The newest Fancy Pants game is actually on Steam, and it's really cool to see quality stick figure games actually having some success there. Speaking of which... 2017 was a great year for game releases, and a year with Breath of the Wild, Cuphead, Sonic Mania, Super Mario Odyssey, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, Little Nightmares, Hollow Knight, and so on. The best game of the year looked like this. West of Loathing is an RPG based on Kingdom of Loathing. There's great gameplay, practically non-stop jokes, and an art style unlike any other. I love how this game looks. The art style fits perfectly with the humor and tone of the game, but also just looks genuinely good. I think I'm just a sucker for games with more of a hand-drawn style, but combining that with the whole 2D characters on a 3D plane thing makes it so nice. It feels like the game was really built around the art direction though. I can't imagine this game working with any other art style. And this visual style is where a lot of the game's humor comes in. This game even has a colorblind mode. Yeah. You know, the best joke in West of Loathing isn't even a joke in the actual game. The physical release comes with this concept art book. It shows concept art of the characters side by side with their final in-game designs, and I just love this so much. I guess my whole point with this video is that stuff that looks like this shouldn't be looked down upon because it's simple. It shouldn't be associated with amateurs or laziness. It's a valid art style, and people have gone on to prove that you can make beautiful works of art with it, just like any other art style. With the success of games like West of Loathing or Super Fancy Pants Adventure, I think people are starting to realize this. Well, I think that is a good place to end things off for today. Sorry, I'm just, I'm very busy. I have a lot of things to get done today, so I, I better get to it. I'll see you guys in the next video.